Hello. The goal of this video is to give you a very brief overview of what the Arduino prototyping platform is all about. You can see on the screen right now a Arduino Uno board. It's a spare that uh, I don't actually have connected to anything, but it is a fully functional device. And the idea behind the entire Arduino platform is to allow electrical engineers or programmers or in my case hobbyists who do both to be able to put together various uh, electrical circuits to be in turn controlled by a computer in this case a microcontroller this little guy right here is actually essentially a very small computer on a chip with memory processing power and uh, unlike your regular CPU on a computer the ability to drive various uh, electrical circuits through all of these little ports you see on the top and bottom and you can see the idea is to make it uh, very easy to build an electrical circuit without necessarily having to solder or buy special equipment. For example, to hook something up, I can just uh, put a wire, obviously just one wire not doing anything in this case, into one of those little ports on there and hook it up to whatever I want. A, a switch or a battery or a power supply uh, goes on and on and I'll take you through some actual somewhat real world examples in a moment. On the end of the board, if I turn it around for you here, you can actually see a USB port, and uh, that's how it gets plugged into the computer for programming. So, having completed that admittedly very brief introduction to the Arduino prototyping platform, uh, let's talk about where you might use it in the real world. So I'll ask you for a moment to pretend uh, that you have an old boat, as I happen to have, that happens to be named the escape key, and it's missing some things that you wish it had on board. And for the sake of argument, we're just going to say that we really wish that it had a nice digital voltmeter to tell us how the batteries on board the ship were doing, and maybe also a way to know how many hours the engines had been running for, because the boat doesn't have it. Well, of course, that's a good example, because that's exactly the problem I'm uh, facing at the moment. So if you look at the display in front of you, you've got a little label for your boat called the escape key. And uh, you can see that your battery is at 12.65 volts, which is pretty good for a 12-volt battery. Uh, and, you know, you might uh, be concerned that at some point the battery is going to die or something, and uh, you'll like your display to tell you. And uh, let's say your battery goes bad for a minute down to zero volts. Well, not only does it uh, show your zero volts, but a uh, little sign comes on there that says under volt. And, uh, you know, you could have a program to do some other things like turn on lights, set an alarm, uh, write a log entry, uh, send an email, you name it. And then let's also say that by the same token, perhaps you've got interest in knowing how many hours the motor was on for. So maybe there's a connection out there somewhere that when the light turn sorry that when the ignition is turned on uh it closes the circuit and your arduino is able to detect well the the port ignition on a on a boat with two engines is turned on and maybe something's happening in the background like tracking how many hours you're running it for telling you when it's time to change the oil uh that sort of thing So if you've managed to stick with me thus far through this video, you may be interested in, okay, so that was really neat what you just showed me on the display. Well, how is it actually working? First of all, let me tell you that everything that you just saw uh, only involved two of those Arduinos, uh, which, by the way, I should mention are, with the exception of the real big ones, sub-$100 products each, and uh, that LCD display as well, of course, you saw. And... Uh, all we're doing here is we're using this Arduino right here. It's a little bit bigger than the other one I showed you. And this is my prototyping uh, Arduino that I use for my quote-unquote production work, but obviously it's just for prototyping. And what I've done here is I have a couple of wires coming off. This one here happens to connect to an analog input port. And this one over here is the ground wire which in turn goes into something called a voltage divider. And the reason for the voltage divider is the Arduino can only read up to 5 volts. And of course, uh, a car or boat battery is 12 volts. Well, that divides it, in this case, a ratio of about 3 to 1 that uh, feeds into the Arduino, and it does the math to figure out uh, what the voltage is. And then, obviously, up here, if I lift you up a little bit, I've just got a boat battery. And when earlier I made the voltage go down to 0 volts, all I did was 
pulled this ground wire off of the battery, and uh, the Arduino, I can see it right now, you can't, uh, is having its undervolt uh, display right now. What I did is I connected these two Arduinos. I'm going to show you the other one because this other one here is worth mentioning. So you can see the display I showed you before and the Arduino in, Arduino in front of it. I connected them using a technology called an I2C bus. It's just the way I happened to try to connect the two together and I wrote my own protocol called ShipNet to uh, connect them up. There's probably going to be a better way that I'll learn about later to do that. But what I want to point out here is that the other Arduino, which is in charge of display, I purposely split the two so that I have a data collection Arduino, which can be sort of down in the bowels of the ship, or not really in the bilge, but down a bit lower, and then another one somewhere uh, up near the um, instrument panel because you don't usually want the device driving a display to be too far away from the display itself. So in front of you, what you have right here is another Arduino. Now, I'd like to point out this one is quite a bit different than the other one I showed you in that there are no ports. There's nowhere to, to plug a wire into this device. In fact, I've got the programming card on here. I'll take it off because it wouldn't be there in the real world. And What's happened here is after prototyping one of these, in fact using the other Arduino I showed you earlier, I went ahead and said, okay, this works. This is going to be a permanent setup. So I figured out all of my connections, my wiring, my components, and uh, I actually wired this permanently and soldered it down. So I kind of used an Arduino first to prototype, but then to build the real version, and if all goes well, the, the two components, this Arduino board and this display that I'm showing you right now, will uh, hopefully be, get installed in the boat uh, over the winter. So again, you've got your chip, which is essentially a small computer. I purposely built this with a heartbeat light, lets me know the program's running. And uh, there's a transistor there that allows me to dim and brighten this display all programmatically. And that's just the power light over there. I don't know if there's anything exciting on the back. No, just a couple of wires. Um, so essentially, with those two Arduinos and the uh, related wiring and a couple of electrical components that kind of out of the scope of this video, I was able to uh, read the voltage of a battery and I was able to figure out whether or not the port ignition was on. I'll take out the wire, but I don't think you'll see the difference. Oh, you can kind of see it in the back there. The, the label went off on the, Arduino, uh, on the Arduino's display, which is the LCD in this case. So we've focused really so far on the hardware of the Arduino, and I'm not going to get really deeply into the programming piece of it, uh, simply because it's difficult to do in a video, but uh, suffice it to say that the uh, hardware and the program that you just saw running is all written in a variant of C, uh, easy to pick up if you're a, a procedure-based programmer, event-based programmer, uh, no big deal. Uh, it's pretty pretty easy to uh, to get to learn. But I did want to show you a product that I haven't done a lot with yet, but I just did a quick test on it called the Netduino, which is actually a product that runs underneath the Microsoft Micro Framework, which is a subset of the uh, .NET Framework, a very small subset, not surprising, of, of the .NET Micro Framework. But again, uh, what you're looking at right now is an entire computer, uh, entirely capable of running uh, the .NET Micro Framework, and uh, you know you can write some quick little hello world programs on it and such. Over here you've got uh, not only your power connector and a very small USB connector right there, but uh, this particular model happens to come with a built-in Ethernet controller so that you can uh, well, plug an Ethernet and do anything you want to from there with something this small. You can actually write a tiny web server on it if you wanted to badly enough, which, for example, could let you know the temperature of your refrigerator or if it were hooked up to the Internet, uh, whether or not your boat was sinking. Um, so that is about it for the high-level uh, demonstration of uh, the Arduino prototyping platform. Best uh, takeaway from this conversation is to remember that it is for prototyping in order to come up with what you want to do, test it, proof of concept. Uh, and then when you're ready for it, there are various ways out there to use exactly the same microprocessor to create a permanent or semi-permanent installation if you want to build just one of something or if you're uh, doing something more commercial you can certainly get these microprocessors in huge quantities and even have fabrication houses build you the proper circuit boards and uh, whatever you need to create a product for the mass market. Thank you very much.